Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE Biology Revision video. Today we're going to be continuing on with part 3 of the Common Errors and Misconceptions series where I go through a couple of questions and sort of exemplify where previous students went wrong with these answers and what the common errors and misconceptions were just so that you can avoid making the same mistakes in your exam. So we've got six questions here and as I scroll through I want you to pause the video and actually answer these six questions first. You should be able to solve them within 4 minutes and 30 seconds so here we go. Okay, so I hope you guys have all arrived at an answer. Let's just go through these questions one by one. So this first question shows you a food chain that goes from an apple tree to these herbivorous insects to carnivorous insects and then the bird comes along and eats them. So which pyramid of numbers represents the food chain? And the answer was B. Unfortunately, most students got this wrong and went for something like A. And this demonstrates a lack of knowledge of the differences between the pyramid of numbers and the pyramid of biomass. And so you can see that B doesn't really look like a pyramid. Okay, that's where a lot of people may have got caught off guard. And but this is a fundamental flaw of the pyramid of numbers and that's why usually we demonstrate it in a pyramid of biomass. So let's go take a look at this diagram over here. If you have this food chain going from the uh, the large bird to the small bird, the blue tit to the caterpillar to the oak tree, if you were to put that in a pyramid of numbers, then you'll get the sh odd shape of the pyramid, which doesn't really look like a pyramid, simply because this oak tree is just a single tree, and that's why the very bottom is so tiny. Whereas in the pyramid of biomass, the biomass is the mass of uh, living biological organisms in a given area, or ecosystem at a given time, so it actually accounts for the mass instead of the number. And you can imagine that the mass of the oak tree is going to get is going to be quite large, and the mass is a better representation of the actual energy within that particular trophic level. Okay, so therefore you get the biomass pyramid being a lot more like a pyramid. And that's why in most cases we use the pyramid of biomass and it is a much more accurate representation of what's actually going on in the food chain compared to the pyramid of numbers. And so that's the sort of knowledge that was required for you to get that question right uh, in this first question. So the second question here a student investigating the effect of temperature on the rate of transpiration. Which environmental conditions should be kept constant during the investigation? And so here the answer was B. Okay, And so this required you to understand the differences between controlled variables and also the independent variable. In any sort of investigation, in this case because we're investigating the effect of temperature, it's just the temperature that we want to change in terms of the variables in the investigation. Everything else that possibly might affect the transpiration rate needs to be kept constant. The reason for that is if we don't keep the other things constant, for example, the humidity or the light intensity or the wind speed, then how do we know that the results uh, that we get are actually from the temperature? Okay, because if we don't if we if we don't keep these other things constant, then that may affect the results, which is not what we want. So in any sort of investigation, we're only changing the independent variable. In this case, the temperature, and everything else we need to keep exactly constant. And a lot of people weren't aware of this, and this is really really important because it'll help you for your paper six as well. So here in the third question, the diagram shows a seedling growing inside a dark box. Keyword dark box. What type of responses affect the direction of growth of the root and shoot in this experiment? The root goes downwards, the shoot goes upwards. This is an example of gravitropism in both cases. The answer was A. Now a lot of people fell for the trap of going either for C, D or even B. And the main idea behind these errors was that they thought that there was some sort of phototropism involved. Now phototropism is the sort of the response to light stimulus. Remember, this is inside a dark box, so you cannot have any sort of phototropism happening at all. And so going further in depth into this, 
This is an example of gravitropism and you should be aware that from the shoot tip or the root tip you're going to get these things called auxins and these auxins are going to be pulled by gravity. In the roots, the auxins are going to slow the growth so the bottom part will grow slower than the top, that's why the root will go downwards whereas in the shoots, again, you'll get an accumulation of auxins in the bottom part of the shoot but in the shoots, the auxins are going to stimulate growth that's why the shoots are going to go upwards against gravity so the shoots demonstrate negative geotropism or gravitropism whereas the roots demonstrate positive gravitropism or geotropism suggesting that uh, it grows towards the gravity in the roots and away from the gravity gravity in the shoots. So that's quite important. So just before I go through this uh, question about the carbon cycle, I do want you to just uh, be aware that I have been putting a lot of content on my A Star Masterclass channel. And so, for example, I've got this uh, course that I've gone through each topic, uh, topic by topic, about common paper four questions so that you can sort of understand what sort of questions you might get in your examinations and if so, how to solve them as well. So there's over 100 exclusive videos that you can watch for IGCSE Biology. I will be putting a course for paper six for biology and going to other topics or other subjects such as chemistry and physics as well. And I think this, along with all the other resources that I have put on the channel, will be very helpful for you and it's just $3 a month and it'll help you support me create content generally on YouTube and other projects that I want to be carrying out in the future as well so if you're interested make sure you check that out so as we move on to this question here the diagram shows part of the carbon cycle and so they ask you which process is missing from the diagram and so the answer here was plant respiration. Remember, respiration is the process in which you produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And here, they've correctly labeled the respiration of animals, but unfortunately, they haven't labeled the respiration of plants. And so, if we take a look down below, well, actually, no, I haven't had, I don't have a diagram of the carbon cycle here. Yes, so here, if you have um, the plants, what absorbs the carbon dioxide is of course photosynthesis. Okay, that's photosynthesis, but we actually should have a label going upwards like this as part of the emission into the atmosphere from the process of respiration in plants. And so here, this question, the following statements give information about the reproduction of different organisms, and we've got these three statements, and you just need to state which one was correct and the answer here was A okay all statements 1 2 3 and uh, all 3 1 2 3 were correct and a lot of people actually got this wrong suggesting that well, there was quite a fair bit of uncertainty regarding the features of asexual and sexual reproduction and so of course this is about asexual reproduction and it is the idea that you can produce uh, genetically identical daughter cells from the parent cell and for this to happen you don't get any fertilization okay it's just uh, a type of cell division that doesn't require two gametes to fuse and um, it is true that because the offspring or the daughter cells are produced from one parent cell that uh, the banana plants are going to be genetically identical so all three statements was they were correct Similarly, this question is also about uh, the topic of reproduction, but this time it's going to be about sexual reproduction. So which stages in sexual reproduction occur in both flowering plants and human reproduction? So the answer here again was A, all three statements were correct. In any sort of sexual reproduction, you're going to get the gametes that are going to be produced by meiosis, which is the process of going from a diploid to a haploid cell and two gametes fused to form a zygote, yes that is correct, and plants you get the pollen that comes from the anther that lands on the stigma and eventually makes its way to the ovule to fertilize and also in humans you've got the sperm entering the vagina uh, going eventually over to the oviduct where it meets the egg and fertilizes it. 
Um, the male gamete moves to the female gamete. That is correct in both instances as well. As I said before, the male gamete from the sperm enters the vagina, making its way to the oviduct, whereas in plants, you've got the pollen that goes from the anther and flies all the way to the stigma and eventually over to the ovule via the pollen tube. And this should all be making a lot of sense. Here we've got the diagram. The sperm will obviously enter through the vagina, go through the cervix, go over to the oviduct, and generally the oviduct over here is where fertilization occurs. In the plant, we've got the anther, which contains the pollen. The pollen is going to make its way over to the stigma, and through the pollen tube, make its way over to the ovule for fertilization. So, I hope this video was helpful for you guys, um, and I hope to see you in the next video.